want to give you two new ideas on consumer orientation to alternative use to the very traditional one. And the very traditional one would say, you as a company, you must understand the expectations of a consumer. Then you fulfill the expectations of a consumer. The outcome of a fulfilled expectation is called satisfaction. Higher satisfaction means higher loyalty, and higher loyalty means more profit. This was labeled by the Harvard Business School 20 years ago as the service profit chain. And this is what lots of companies still follow. But the question today is, when every company follows this overall main strategy of being customer oriented, of being in this service profit chain, do we really gain some competitive advantage? Does it make fun for you as a CEO does it make fun for your employees to work in a company that is just doing what customers want? And is this really creative to just do what customers ask you to do? And I would say no to all three questions. So we need new ideas of customer orientation. One idea is labeled as proactive, offensive marketing. And in the US they say, driving markets instead of markets driven. When you follow the consumer, you're market driven. The new idea should be to drive the consumer, to drive a market, to be so attractive, so interesting that the consumers follow you and not you have to follow the consumer. And I want to make you one small example of a great company. And I wanted to do the example of Belgacom, but it was at the end it was not a positive example. So they told me to do a non belgian example, and that's what I'm doing now. So I'll give you now the example of a big American success story. One of the biggest success stories ever told, and for sure the biggest ever told in the airlines industry, and everyone knows Southwest Airlines. This is a big success story also when you measure it based on the financial value of Southwest Airlines. So I just uh, searched the internet one hour ago and the market capitalization of Southwest Airlines was one hour ago, $9.2 billion. And as a comparison, the market capitalization of Lufthansa and Air Brussels and all the others was 5.5 billion. So it was two times bigger on market capitalization than the biggest European and international airlines. What did they do? They didn't say, we follow what our consumers want, more luxury and more space and more to eat and even scampi on the plane. No. So they, they did something very different. They said, we have an own idea. And we think our idea is so great that our consumers will follow us. And our idea is to change the way of flying to change the way of flying. And when they started in 1970, flying was more or less luxury. It was for the well-to-do's and for business travelers. And they said, we open the skies for everyone, we cut down the prices, and we are, as a second idea, we are always on time. And so what was born was the always on time airlines, a no-frill airline. And they not only created a new company, they created a new market. And today, most of the consumers all over the world have a different market in their brains that's called a different category in the brains. And this means the question is, do I fly a low-cost carrier? And this is the mother of all no-cost carrier. Or do I fly a traditional carrier? And now, you should learn something about the customer orientation of Southwest Airlines, and so I have to tell you something about my first flight. Because customer orientation is not in your books, it's not in Excel sheets, customer orientation is only in the direct experience of a consumer. And so you have to listen now to my first experience with Southwest Airlines. And this was a flight eight years ago or nine years ago from Phoenix, to San Diego. Yeah, it's 
like Brussels Munich. Brussels Munich is, it depends. Brussels Airlines, you can start with 100 euros. Lufthansa is around four or 500 euros. Yeah? And they, I had to pay eight years ago, everything included $35 for this flight. Yeah? So very big, very low cost. First idea fulfilled. And then I was sitting in a waiting lounge and was waiting for our flight to board the aircraft. And five minutes before we started to board the aircraft, a young lady from the ground crew came into this waiting room. She went behind her counter, took a microphone and said, hi, my name is Cindy. I am from Southwest Airlines. And I'll have to inform you that we have a short delay of around 35 minutes. And then she took the microphone back and left. And I, of course, was very disappointed. Yeah, it's the first time that we try Southwest Airlines and then they are late. And I was a little bit nervous because that time we didn't have any cell phones, so will it work that somebody picks me up? Probably not. And this was experienced by the person sitting next to me, a typical business traveler with a suit and a tie and gray hair. So and then he said, yes the first time with Southwest Airlines and I said yes it's my first time with Southwest Airlines and then he said yes you are European and I said yes I'm European and I said yeah you must know we here in America we know Southwest Airlines is very famous for always making some joke with our guests and I'm very sure in five minutes Cindy comes back and will board the aircraft so Everyone was a little bit angry because of the delay, and five minutes later, everyone is happy because there is no delay. Yeah? So that's their strategy, how they do it. Yeah? Great strategy. And so five minutes later, Cindy came back, she took her microphone, said, yeah, perhaps you remember me, I'm Cindy from Southwest Airlines, and I informed you about this delay, but this was a mistake. We'll have a delay of one hour. One hour. And then she did something what everyone learns at university in psychology called external attribution. So you must give your fault to another person, yeah, to attribute it to an external source. So it was not the fault of Southwest Airlines, it was the fault of some weather conditions in, I don't know. And then she said, yes, I know it's a problem for all of you now with this big problem and you will be late and so what can we do? Everyone should receive a gift now. Yeah, great. We are customer oriented, so we give a gift to our customers. And then she said, yeah, but it's a problem. If you give a gift to 120 customers, you don't have the money for this because we are so low cost. You paid such a low price for your ticket. So I can't give a gift to everyone, but I could give a gift to one of you. One. One receives a gift. Great. But two. And it's a great gift because one receives a free ticket from Southwest Airlines, where, wherever you want to go, you can bring another person with you, you just come to the counter, show your voucher, and then you're on the plane. And then Cindy said, yeah, I will give this gift to one of you. Does every one of you have your driver license with you? We Europeans, we thought now they are totally stupid, but the Americans, yeah, yeah, of course, you have a driver license with us, it's normal. And then Cindy said, yeah, I will give this free flight to the person with the most ugliest picture in the driver's license. 